Welcome to our second podcast of Unit 5. We've been talking about bonding, and in class you did an activity and looked at how different compounds have different properties based on the types of bonds. Then we named covalent and wrote them, and remember that's with the prefixes, mono, di, tri. Um, I would say they're the easiest, why we did them first. So now let's talk about ionic. We're on top of page 5. An ionic bond, covalent, remember, was a sharing Ionic bonds is a transfer of electrons. Transfer, okay? Ions, keyword ions. Remember our two type of ions. That means we're going to have a cation and we're going to have an anion, which means there's a positive with a negative, which means most of the time it's a metal and a nonmetal. There's like very few exceptions, and that's when we start getting into polyatomic ions. We'll talk about those polyatomics. Because remember, metals lose electrons, nonmetals gain electrons. So it's all about the metals are going to lose, and they're going to give the electrons, give, that's in quotation marks, to the nonmetals as we're going through it. So we're going to use, if we're going to start showing um, some examples of how it all happens, we're going to use our electron dots, remember our Lewis dots that we drew with just the valence electrons. So sodium, remember, has just one, whoops, one. Magnesium had two. Boron had three. It's all about the valence, where they're at on the periodic table. Oh yeah, you need your periodic tables out. Then nitrogen, we know they had five. Oxygen, we had our six. Fluorine, seven. And then we know our neon had all eight. So that should have been a review. Okay, so on your periodic table, if you haven't written this already, you would need to write this down now. You need to learn these, because remember on my periodic table that you get on a test, you don't have these. But you know because of the one valence, everything in group one gets a plus one. Everything in group two is a plus two. Notice we've left some off on these. These are ones we're going to talk about later in class. Have, what if we don't know their charges? Is there a way we can find out? And yes, there is. Okay, these right here in this um, diagonal, you need to know silver is a plus one, zinc is a plus two, aluminum is a plus three. Write that on your periodic table. Put that in your memory bank. Okay, then let's do our nonmetals. Zeros, negative ones if for halogens because they have seven valence, they're going to gain one. Oxygen is going to gain two. Nitrogen is going to gain three. Now, carbon sometimes is a plus four. Excuse me, carbon would be a minus four. And below them are also a plus four. But again, typically on those below, we use Roman numerals to know their charges. So these are the most common ones that you do need to know. So the octet is why do things make compounds? And we will, when we do the covalence, we will come back in, after Christmas and spend more time drawing them. But it's the octet, and remember octet means eight. So they're trying to have that octet, which means, again, the noble gas, have that stable full shell configuration because that's going to be lower energy, and lower energy means greater stability. And that is why compounds four is to reduce the energy to have it at a lower energy that means greater stability. So there's some rules when we draw these Lewis dots. Okay, we're going to look first. You have to look at how many valence. Then you're going to notice that ionic or covalent. What does this mean you're looking for? Right here. If it's a metal, you know it has to be ionic. That is so important. It is so, so, so important. So if it's ionic, we're going to use charges and brackets to represent. So let's just kind of start doing some of these. So I have sodium and chlorine. Okay, so sodium, I know, sitting over here is one. Chlorine has, and a lot of times what I'm going to start doing is actually rearranging the dots to make it more convenient. So what's going to happen then? Sodium wants to have a full octet, so it can either gain seven or lose this one. Because if it has 11, if it loses this one, it's going to be like neon's configuration and more stable. Look at chlorine. It can either lose all seven or gain one. So what's going to happen? 
sodium is going to give that electron. So what is going to happen then, notice sodium does not have that valence electron. That's how come it's a plus one charge. Chloride now has eight valence electrons. And because it has that extra one, that's why it has a negative one charge. So this right here is symbolizing an ionic compound. So between the two brackets, notice it's not a line, but between the two brackets, that means an ionic bond is being formed. So you've made a compound. The compound is now sodium chloride. Because remember, all no, mind yourself, all nonmetals, we talked about this, the names change to end in ide when an ion. So you get an ide when it's an ion. Okay, well what's going to happen between calcium and sulfur? So what do you do first? Start with those valence. Calcium's in group two, has two. Sulfur's in group six. That means it has the six. So look what's going to happen. Calcium's going to give one. It still has another one. It's going to give another one. So what's that going to mean then? Calcium is going to lose two. Look at no dots, no dots. But it's going to have a positive two charge because it lost two electrons. Sulfur is going to sit over here. Now it has a full valence. It has its octet and it has a minus two charge. So when they form this, the calcium and the sulfide, they have, look at their charges, they've balanced out. Okay, I know it's on your packet. You have another calcium sulfur ion. Obviously, you don't need to redo that one. Okay, what would happen then between potassium and oxygen? Okay, potassium has one valent, valence. Oxygen has the six. So potassium can give that. Problem is, look at oxygen isn't happy. I use that word, don't use that word, but it's not um, stable because it needs one more electron. So what does that mean is you're going to use another potassium and that potassium is going to give up its electron. So you're going to have a potassium with a plus one. Okay, but you're going to have two of them. We're going to talk about different ways we can represent this. Excuse me, put the charge outside. I'll try to be consistent. And then you're going to have oxygen that has now became oxide because it's a ion with a negative two charge. So look at what we have. We have a positive one, positive one, so that adds up to a positive two, negative two. Because it's transferring electrons, so you have to balance out the number of electrons. So some ways different people write this, different companies, meaning sometimes a district. Sometimes they write it like this to say that there's two potassiums for every oxide that comes. Sometimes you'll see some write it like this to say again that it's two oxides. But what is important that is two potassiums for every one oxygen because, and these all are the same thing. They all mean the same thing. But look at what happens. You have to balance the charges. The charges have to balance out. So look at what this means. Okay, net charge of all ionic compounds is zero zero because that means you're transferring the same number of electrons and that's really really important okay I've left one I skipped one guess what that means yes I want you to do that one so now go down one more and I have aluminum and bromine so look at aluminum aluminum I know has one two three electrons okay bromine then has seven valence electrons because it's in group 17 or 7a. So this aluminum is going to give an electron. But aluminum still has two electrons it wants to lose. So you're going to need another bromine. 
And notice you're using the same elements because we're talking about a compound between aluminum and bromine. Don't bring in any other compounds. And then what else do you have? You're going to have to bring in another aluminum because it had three electrons to lose, but each bromine could only gain one. So what happens in aluminum will have a plus three charge, and that means you're going to have three bromines that are now full. Each bromine, though, has a negative one charge. Notice I don't say that bromine is a negative three because it's not. It only has one more than it should. Three goes outside of it. Or again, how could I have written it another way? No valence electrons on the metal because it's lost it. You could have said bromine with that negative one has the three valence. Now, do we have to do this every time we write an ionic compound? Thankfully, no. And that's what the next time in class we're going to kind of look at shortcuts. But the, the important thing, though, is to realize why we have to have subscripts. These are my subscripts. And what they represent is a balancing of the electrons. Because again, that's what's so important. You have to equal out the number of electrons being lost and being gained. So I've left you one at the bottom. So that means you have two to do on your own. And puzzle it out. Figure out what is the combination. How many do you need of each in order to transfer all of the electrons? We will see you the next.